House will come back to order. House will be back in order. The clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. The clerk will read. Resolution by Representative Alexander, 66, recognizing commending Mr. Michael Paget. Resolution by Representative Tankersley, 160th, recognizing commending Dr. Hudson Powell, Jr. Resolution by Representative Hill, 22nd, recognizing commending Coach Lindsey Huffman, her superlative leadership, head coach of Reinhardt University women's basketball team. Resolution by Representative Smith, 70th, recognizing commending Sam Jones, occasion of his retirement. Resolution by Representative Smith, 70th, recognizing commending Jane Keith, being honored with a lifetime membership in the Garden Club of Georgia. Resolution by Representative Smith, 70th, recognizing commending Mr. Danny Bishop. Resolution by Representative Hill, 22nd, congratulating Reinhardt University women's basketball team winning its first Appalachian Athletic Conference Championship. Resolution by Representative Neil, 2nd, congratulating Gordon Lee High School Lady Trojans basketball team winning the Georgia High School Association Class A Public State Championship. Resolution by Representative Harbin, 122nd, recognizing the committee, Columbia County School Superintendent Charles Nagel, case of his retirement. Resolution by Representative Green, 151st, recognizing the committee, Celia Bostwick, case of her retirement. Resolution by Representative Hatchett, 150th, congratulating Emily Aaron Hatchett, recipient of 2014 Distinguished Young Women Award in Dublin, Georgia. Resolution by Representative Buckner, 137th, recognizing the committee, Adolfo Perez. Semifinalist 2013 Muskogee County School District Teacher of the Year. Resolution by Representative Buckner, 137th, recognized as commending Carol Wink, semifinalist, Muskogee County School District Teacher. Resolution by Representative Buckner, recognized as commending Brenda Howell, semifinalist, and the Muskogee School District Teacher of the Year. Resolution by Representative Buckner, 137th, recognized as commending Stephanie Marley, semifinalist. Muskogee County School District Teacher of the Year Res Resolution by Representative Buckner on the 137th, recognizing Kim, Kim Lester, semifinalist, 2013 Muskogee County School District Teacher. Resolution by Representative Buckner, recognizing Kim Ellen Lane, a semifinalist to the Muskogee County School District Teacher of the Year. Uh, resolution by Representative Buckner on the 137th, we're on recognizes commending Rhonda Allen, semifinalist for the Muskogee County School District Teacher of the Year. Resolution by Representative Buckner, commending Benjamin Faust, a semifinalist for the Muskogee School District Teacher of the Year. Resolution by Representative Buckner, commending Christy Grigsby, semifinalist for the School Teacher District of the Year. Resolution by Representative Buckner, commending Jennifer Sappington, semifinalist, 2013 Muskogee County School District of the Year. Resolution by Representative Wilkerson, 38th. Recognized commending Bernie Elementary School, 2013 Helen Ruffin Reading Bowls Champions. Resolution by Representative Lumsden, 12th. Commending Cheris Sumner, Chattooga County High School Star Teacher. And a resolution by Representative Lumsden, 12th. Commending Mr. Andy Cox, Trine High School Star Teacher through the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to the adoption of the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, the resolutions are adopted.
The chair wants to announce that Senate Bill 65 will be postponed to the next legislative day. The chair also wants to announce that Senate Bill 187 will be postponed to the next legislative day. The chair recognizes Representative Kirby for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House insist on our version of Senate Bill 62. Representative Kirby has moved that the House insist on its position on Senate Bill 62. The clerk will read the caption. Senate Bill 62, by Senate Hill 32nd, a bill being entitled Amendment Title 31, Lending Care Protection Engine Elderly Patients, Establishing Federal, State Funded Health Care Financing Programs Overview Committee. Representative Kirby had, is recognized to explain his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be very brief. As we vetted this bill in the committee, we, we took out some language that we thought that wasn't needed and feel we certainly have the better version. And I encourage you and ask for your favorable consideration of our position. Thank you. Representative Kirby has moved that the House insist on its position on Senate Bill 62. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and the House has insisted on its position on Senate Bill 62. We are about now to go on to the supplemental rules calendar. The supplemental rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 142. Senate Bill 142. Senate Bill 142 by Senator Miller of the 40th. A bill to be entitled Act Men Title 47 leading to salary, retirement, death, disability benefits of the Georgia Judicial Retirement System for by the Board of Trustees shall have authority to determine time and circumstances of paying dip benefits. This bill had been for the House Committee on Retirement. The committee recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Bill's being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes Chairman Weldon to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, bring you South, uh, Senate Bill uh, 142. This bill allows for those who are, uh, who become members of the uh, judicial retirement system, they can go back and have a one-third credit for the months they've served uh, to count for their qualification for the vesting in the judicial retirement system. That's what this does. There are some requirements in the bill that require they cannot work over uh, 1,040 hours um, in a calendar year. Uh, and that's, that's basically what it does. It just makes us more competitive in uh, maintaining our judicial retirement system and providing good benefits to qualified judges. Mr. Speaker, if there's no questions, I'll yield the will. You have a question. I'll, I'll yield. I don't know what kind of coffee he's drinking this afternoon, but the uh, <laughs> chair recognizes the House Transportation Committee Chairman, thought. Chairman Roberts, to your right for a, another question. I had a good nap, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Gentlemen, yield. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, on second thought. Um, <laughs> Too late I, now. I will yield. It, it, it actually is a friendly question. It, is, this, is this revenue neutral? I mean... It, this is a non-fiscal bill. When in re reference to a retirement bill, that's generally what we say. Is it, it's exactly. It's generally what we say. Or we don't say it's, <laughs> it's revenue neutral. We say it's a non-fiscal bill, so it doesn't require more payment from the assets which are maintained for the beneficiaries. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> you have another question. Oh, Lord. Uh, I will yield. Mr. Yeah, Speaker. I think you better yield on this one. Chair recognizes the chairman of the rules committee, Chairman Meadows, to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? To my friend from Calhoun, yes, sir. Now, what I need to know about the bill, is it okay for us to vote yes <laughs> and no? as you just got through doing in a rules committee. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Be real careful. <laughs> it, it, clearly, there, there are two, you know, and, and as opposed to in the rules committee, we have buttons up there. If you push the green, that'd be the best way to vote on this. <laughs> Watch that board. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. No Speaker. further questions. Thank you. I'll yield the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of Senate Bill 142 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of Senate Bill 142. The ayes are 168, the nays are two. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 143. Senate Bill 143. Senate Bill 143 by Senator Miller of the 40th. The bill will be entitled, I'm entitled 47, relating to general provisions relative to public retirement system standards law. The bill has been before the House Committee on Retirement Committee recommends the bill to pass. The bill's being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes. The chairman of the House Retirement Committee, Chairman Battles, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I'll go ahead and, and uh, some of the questions that was asked of my colleague that was just up here, hit green and we'll all be in good shape. Actually, uh, Senate Bill 143 is just a, a, a bill to correct an error that was made several years ago. And what it does is that this bill corrects a linkage between Title 47 and 53. And inadvertently, uh, this was left off uh, a few years ago, and all this does is link these two together. Just to give you a little explanation, Title 53 relates to wills, trust, and administration of estates, and uh, Title 47 relates to retirement and pensions. And uh, these two, uh, as I said, were separated uh, and was not dealt with uh, several years ago. So this just corrects an error that was made several years, years ago. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, try and answer them. And if not, I will uh, yield the well and ask for your federal consideration. You do not have any questions. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor 
of the passage of Senate Bill 143. We'll vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of Senate Bill 143. The ayes are 168, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 178. Senate Bill 178. Senate Bill 178, by Senator Miller, the 40th. The bill will be entitled, I'm entitled 47, related to retirement, retirement allowances, death benefits, and the Georgia Legislative Retirement System. The bill had been for the House Committee on Time of the Committee recommends this bill do pass. This bill is being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes Chairman Maxwell to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a, another retirement bill that's brought on behalf of the employer's retirement system. It's basically clean up legislation uh, for the uh, legislative retirement system. It does not impact benefits or eligibility. Lines 15 through 19 provides that the employer's retirement system board of trustees has the authority to comply with federally mandated requirements if a conflict arises between state and federal statutes. In lines 76 and 80 through 81, it defines a public employer previously. Uh, this has not changed, but the code section that referenced the state instead of public employer, and we move that over uh, so that lines 26 through 39 would correct that issue. And that's basically what the bill does, and I would ask for your favorable consideration. Any questions, I'll try to answer them. You have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of Senate Bill 178 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of Senate Bill 178. The ayes are 169, the nays are 1. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Chair announces that Senate Bill 181, 181 will be postponed till the next legislative day. It is the chair's understanding that uh, there is an amendment that is being handed out now on an agree by um, Chairman Ron Stevens on House Bill 193. 
but uh, we are not going to take that up today so that you will have adequate time to read that, as I know all of you will tonight and tomorrow and be prepared to consider that on Thursday. Chair. That'll be in the folders, actually, the, after talking to the clerk. That'll be put in your folders. Chair also wants to announce that Senate Bill 213, Senate Bill 213 will be postponed to the next legislative day. All right, we've still got a little business to do. We're not ready to leave yet. I sort of hate to leave the Senate here working, do y'all? Okay. Chair recognizes, uh, the House will be in order, please. The House will be at order. We have a very special morning order that we forgot to do this morning, and the Chair recognizes for that purpose Representatives Ben Harbin and Representatives Chad Nimmer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Looks uh, like they're going to be joined by the Representative May Beverly, Representative Dickey, Representative Epps, and Representative Peak. What a crew. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this time I'm going to let Representative Harbin Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, we, have a, we do have a special resolution and we're uh, honoring some people, someone today who, uh, you know, I've been here for a long time. Uh, <laughs> almost, I think as long as you, Mr. Rogers, this is my 19th session. And you meet a lot of great people when you're up here and, you know, sometimes those people become good friends and sometimes you learn a lot from them. But what's the best part is when you realize those life lessons that you have imparted have been taken to heart and you see those other people succeed and become better because of what you've done for them. It makes you feel good about yourself. And I'm glad that we were able to help someone become successful. And that's what I've enjoyed doing while I've been here is kind of imparting wisdom and helping the person that we're about to honor today. And I want to thank them. Thank them for making me feel good about what I've done and because they show that the advice I've given pays off. Mr. Nimmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> I know I'm a seat mate, but it's not me. But uh, if, if I may, Mr. Clark, would you read the resolution, please? House Resolution 725 by Representative Nimmer, 178th, Representative Harbin, 122nd. A resolution congratulating Representative Nikki Randall on being named the Citizen of the Year by the Greater <laughs> Macon Chamber of Commerce and for other purposes.
Come on, Nikki. Come on. Come on, girl. The chair is going to order that Representative Randall join this uh, motley crew down here in the well. You know, I've, I've been here a lot less time than Representative Harbin, but uh, I haven't had the opportunity to instill as much wisdom and character into Representative Randall as he has. But when I first was elected, I was sitting in the back corner, and I got a new seating arrangement up here. And I thought it was Representative Holcomb and Harbin that requested me to come up, but I found out later that uh, my secret admirer, Nikki Randall, <laughs> had asked for me to be moved up and, and Mr. Speaker, I just want to thank you. I thank you for uh, and I wanted to sit by her, but I, you know, they wouldn't let me, so. Uh. I appreciate you uh, allowing me to sit up there, but I will say this, I know we're, we're laughing and it's good to smile after long days, but uh, Nikki Randall's an amazing woman. Uh, she's well deserving of the award that she's been given uh, by her peers and, and by her community as being the citizen of the year and I have uh, definitely learned a lot and, and have gained a lot from sitting behind her uh, because she is quick to tell you what she's thinking uh, and she is even quicker to tell you what you should be thinking but uh, Nikki we congratulate you and uh, Ben and I thank the world of you and your delegation does as well so thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I guess it's no real secret that we're about ready to go home for the evening uh, and no one has signed up for an announcement. So, uh, oh, we, we do. If you have an announcement, please come down and sign up with a messenger now. Otherwise, you'll be making the announcement to an empty chamber here shortly. The chair recognizes Chairman Stevens for an announcement. Mr. Speaker, the Economic Development and Tourism Committee will not meet today. We will not meet today. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Harbin for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the Sales Tax Subcommittee of Ways and Means, we have a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. in room 133. Sales Tax Subcommittee of Ways and Means, 10 a.m. in room 133. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Rice for an announcement. You'll be blessed to know that the Legislative Fellowship will not meet tomorrow morning at 7.15. God bless you. Chair recognizes Chairman Jacobs for an announcement. The MARTA Oversight Committee, Mark Tock, will meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. in room 406 of the Coverdell Legislative Office Building. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Chair recognizes Representative Shaw for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow at lunch, 12 o'clock, over at the Department of Ag will be our last luncheon of the year for the Rural Caucus. So come join us. As always, we'll have some good food. And uh, that'll be 12 o'clock tomorrow in uh, room 201 in the Department of Ag. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Lynn Smith for an announcement. Good evening. This is an announcement for the full Natural Resource and Environment Committee. We're meeting tomorrow, Wednesday, at 11 o'clock in room 606, CLOB. We'll be talking about the Georgia Land Conservation Program. Thank you. Chair recognizes the citizen of the year in Macon and Bibb County, Representative Randall, for an announcement. I got a feeling I'm not going to live that down. Uh, women, 
uh, ladies, uh, the uh, Women's Caucus, we, we will have our reception tomorrow from 4 to 6, uh, being hosted by uh, Trip Martin. I hope that we'll be there. This is something he wants to do, just honoring us women in the House so, and in the Senate. So if you'll be there from 4 to 6, thank you. We got a few page photographs that we still need to get made, I understand, and we'll be doing those at the uh, rostrum immediately upon adjournment. And we're at that point. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Gosh, Mr. Speaker, as reluctant as I am to make this motion, I move that this House now adjourn until 9.30 a.m. Thursday morning, March 28th. 2013 for hopefully what will be day 40 of this session. I think it will be. <laughs> On the motion of the majority leader that this house adjourn until 9.30 a.m. Thursday, March 28. Getting out again when it says March. How about that? All those in favor of the motion will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say no. no. The ayes have it. This house is adjourned until Thursday at 9.30 a.m. <laughs>